Hello, hello. Welcome to a brand new episode of Brain Pickings Excel, the special edition of our popular podcast for HR professionals, entrepreneurs and leaders. My name is Leslie and I'm the founder of Zigzag HR. Every month we dive into a specific topic and this month it's all about HR tech and digitization. Every day during a whole month I will take a deep dive into the brains of HR experts, thought leaders and challengers, picking ideas, best and next practices to inspire you and to support you in staying ahead of the curve. And special editions, well, they ask for special places and that's why I'm hosting this podcast in Times More. It's a very inspirational hotspot in Brussels and Crystal Iris the Prince is the founder and she is the founder of a hidden gem and she really understands what hospitality is all about. This podcast is brought to you in collaboration with SAP, originally known for leadership and enterprise resource planning software. SAP has evolved to become a market leader in end-to-end -end enterprise application software, database, analytics, intelligent technologies, and experience management. And a topic we will tackle today in this podcast is employee experience. How to win the war for talent by giving your workforce the workspace that they want, the tools that they need, and the culture that they can celebrate. Instead of thinking of a traditional employee life cycle, future-proof organizations really understand that it's more valuable and more effective to think of moments that matter and moments of impact. And my guest today is Oliver van Kappel, HRIS executive at Daikin Europe. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Leslie. Happy to have you here. Thanks. Are you completely ready for me to dive into your brains? Mm, yes, yeah, sort of. Yep. Sort of comfortable with the idea. <laughs> okay. So um, you are HRIS executive at, uh, at Daikin Europe. Um, what does a day in your average work week looks like? And what is your main challenge in HR today? Mm. Um, it's so... <laughs> The average day um, doesn't really exist. So what's I, what my job is about mm -hmm. is um, going over the planning of different projects. So what I'm responsible for is uh, digitalization. Mm -hmm. More specifically, we have uh, started in 2000, 2017 of rolling mm -hmm. out of uh, success factors. Okay. So at first we, uh, we have laid the foundation with Employee Central and then also we implemented uh, learning management software. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically what, what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is to follow up how things are going. So if I they're going this, fine. <laughs> if everything is going fine. Mm -hmm. Usually I do this based upon some reports. Mm -hmm. But then also we have a lot of meetings to see, okay, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Are there any issues, questions, requests from, uh, from the colleagues? Yeah. Um, but then also looking forwards towards the future, which um, which projects do we have in the pipeline? Yeah. What's the status of different projects that we're rolling out and so on? Okay. So I mm -hmm. maybe to give uh, for the for the viewers some mm -hmm. um, some reference. So Daikin Europe is a full daughter of a Japanese company, mm -hmm. uh, Daikin Industries. Um, as Daikin Europe, we're responsible for Europe, Middle East, and Africa mm -hmm. as an uh, as an organization also uh, hr wise um, we employ about 12000 people wow in um, yeah, spread over 28 countries mm -hmm. something like this okay yeah. so and what is your main challenge in hr today my main challenge is to make sure that everything uh, uh, that our agenda for digitalization mm -hmm. keeps on track okay yeah, yeah. and does it <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not always going <laughs> as smooth as wanted yeah. Um, yeah. but okay we have implemented already some pieces mm -hmm. of uh, of success factors and um, we were quite successful in doing so um, but some projects take longer yeah. than others um, and there it's uh, there we have to really follow up and see yeah. how successful we are how we have to uh, change requirements yeah. change settings stuff okay. like that Okay, all right. So um, now in the last um, 200 years, employers have shifted their focus a few times with regard to the employees because th the first industrial revolution, it was all about utility and what do people need to get the job done. 
during the second industrial revolution, focus shifted towards um, productivity. So what do people need to get their job done as efficiently as possible? Then we had the third industrial revolution and then all attention went to engagement. How can people become more engaged at work so productivity will increase? And today it's all about experience. So the fourth industrial revolution, people crave experiences. And the goal is to create the ultimate employee experience for our workforce. What is, according to you, employee experience? Okay, it's what a, it's quite a subjective feeling of the of the of a person mm -hmm. uh, who is entering the working environment and has all kind of expectations and experiences what is uh, what is happening uh, mm -hmm. around him. So, like, like for example, me coming into this room, it's a very nice room. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first experience that you have. So yeah. that's that's the first experience. Then socially, the people that that are mm -hmm. uh, here. So that's a social. Were uh, they nice to you? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. And then the third one uh, is, mm. is more the digital environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's also more my focus within, yeah. uh, within HR. Yeah, that's that's uh, your key. That's true. Yeah. Um, so why is it so important then for Daikin? Um, the employee experience is a way mm -hmm. of looking at the... I, um, Traditionally, we, we look at efficiencies, mm -hmm. we look at process efficiencies, and usually then you, you think of transactional processes, yep. for example, within HR. The payroll has to be as efficient as possible. Mm -hmm. The recruitment process has to be as efficient as possible. But you look less at the subjective yeah. point of it. So um, having now more since 2017, we shifted more towards... Um, employee experience. Mm -hmm. We have more um, the perspective, taking the perspective of what it is like for mm -hmm. the employee. Yeah, yeah. And what? How does he feel mm -hmm. about um, I, what? What is his experience and working with uh, different systems? Yeah, yeah. Um, how does he feel? So it's it's kind of you you get inside of yeah. the employee to see how. He engages with uh, all interactions during yep. the whole employee yep. life cycle. But it's That's not what. looking at the employee. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's looking from, from the employee to what to you work. are yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, we have had already a lot of uh, employee satisfaction surveys, mm -hmm. for example. But that's really I, that's also the employee experience. But mm -hmm. it's still different. Now yeah. we're looking at in the, towards our processes, what mm -hmm. we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, and what is the the, uh, the How are they experience? Correct. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So now talking about employee experience, there are actually three components. You you kind of mentioned them um, before. You have um, the, the the technical environment, the digital aspect mm -hmm. that that um, that's your um, key. That that includes actually everything going from the apps we use to the hardware, the software, mm -hmm. um, video conferencing platforms, HR systems. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is actually the physical environment, the, the mm -hmm. place that people are working. The it's also the home office Correct. <laughs> at, at yeah. this point, but it can also be headquarters. And then you have actually the most important component of the employee experience, and that's the culture. That's really mm. difficult, very important, but it's not tangible. Now, according to Jacob Morgan, organizations fall along nine levels of maturity when we talk about employee experience, going from inexperienced in all three components towards experienced in one or hopefully all three components what components does your focus uh, your, does your company focus on you you focus on the digital aspect mm -hmm. is that the case for daikin is that the first focus and the only or the main focus at the moment or do the other components count as well the other components count mm -hmm. as well uh, especially i we're a japanese company mm -hmm. so company culture is very important so mm -hmm. working together um i I, the baseline, for example, for success factors, we have implemented SAP success factors. Mm -hmm. So we have rebranded it to Daikin people. But mm -hmm. the baseline is still connecting EMEA colleagues. Okay. So it's still about connecting people, yeah. working together as one big team, as one big HR team. And you can see that quite literally. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have almost 200 uh, HR professionals within the EMEA region okay. uh, working together on different platforms. So yeah. Mainly, I, all the data is stored in, uh, in SAP success factors, mm -hmm. but uh, we have uh, 
uh, SharePoint environment, Teams mm -hmm. environment. So I, there are a lot of contacts. Mm -hmm. So um, the main focus of Daikin is mainly, I, is, uh, mainly, I would say, culture. Okay. But now we also have digital. Mm -hmm. And the way we use employee experience is looking at the digital experience of the employees, yeah. taking the stand from, from the employee, looking yeah. at what is happening around him. Yeah, okay. Uh, Making it as frictionless as correct. possible. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Now, did, um, did changing expectations of the current workforce make you step up uh, the gear in one or more components? Um, yes. Yes, but not only not only the employees. Mm -hmm. Also, I would say also customers, and yeah. then I also our top management. They're also employees, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, the time was uh, was just there to start yeah. uh, with digitizing HR, and we had the opportunity that um, at the same time also our services department mm -hmm. they were looking for a new um, uh, a new platform of uh, of a learning management system. Yeah. So we teamed up with them. So very collaboration, important. Yeah, yeah, collaboration, yeah. very important yeah. teamwork. So because as HR, it's sometimes difficult to make a business case mm -hmm. to, to do a very big investment. And mm -hmm. I, by teaming up with them, they um, offered services, uh, services, uh, trainings mainly mm -hmm. for the whole EMEA region. So to our distributors, to consultants and so on. Yeah. And they needed also some central platform yeah. so that's how we found each other we made together our business case mm -hmm. we presented it and yeah. it, uh, it worked yeah which and made now, it yeah, yeah stronger then yeah <laughs> of course uh -huh, it okay. sounds it sounds very easy now but it was, i can uh, imagine it was <laughs> not uh, all that easy but finding an ally to yeah. to to get that buy-in you need Correct. i think it's uh and especially if you have uh, th that culture in place where teamwork uh, and yeah. collaboration and connection is so important i think that's uh that's a really uh, was a good way to go, but I can imagine it was not really that oh, easy no. as you're but you're talking I, about it. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. our IT department was mm -hmm. quite in favor of having a centralized system. Okay. So yeah, I, it was from different angles. Yeah. So from customer perspective, so mm -hmm. not only employee perspective, yeah. customer perspective, but also IT found that yeah. okay, architecture wise, we needed okay. something. So the timing was. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Correct. Now I would like to discuss uh, the business value of employee experience. Huh? Mm -hmm. Why why bother investing in employee experience? Because it, it costs uh, a lot of, mm -hmm. of money implementing it. Does it make the workforce more productive, more engaged? Does it improve innovation? Does it have an impact on employee turnover? And how do you measure this? Mm -hmm. Well, the employee experience as such does not cost anything. It's the mm -hmm. actions that you want yeah. to take. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the employee experience, for me at least, it's a, it's a way of looking at things and it's also a crowbar to make yeah. things change. Um, yeah. To say, okay, look, especially within HR departments, so we have... I work, I, we have some, some cultures within different countries, but... Mm -hmm. Um, having the employee experience is also helping us to say, look, we have to do things differently. It needs to, I, it needs to be more uh, employee-centered. Mm -hmm. um, it needs to be more simple towards the employees. And the end customer is not the payroll office. Mm -hmm. So I, we're not making data for the payroll office. We should focus first on the employee and then the yeah. payroll office can have some results. So mm -hmm. it's... It's not the most costly thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, a digitalization. I yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Actually, it's implementing the systems when you want to focus on employee experience. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so, but there, indeed, we uh, we try to measure, try mm -hmm. to show that we have efficiencies by, and usually it's by uh, collaborating with with our IT uh, IT mm -hmm. department that we can decommission certain local systems. That yeah. We have one centralized support. Yeah. And sometimes it's collectible, the merit, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, in most cases, it is not not directly. But okay. the efficiencies uh, come along the way. Okay, okay. Um, now, when you talk about employee experience, what is, according to you, the role of HR? 
do they have to take the lead in it or do they have uh um but the role of uh, of hr is quite important uh, mm -hmm. because we are the ideal spokesperson let's say for the employees um so i the role is quite is quite important, I would mm -hmm. say. So then the the key um, the, the 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 driver of the employee experience they have to take the lead actually. Yeah, they have to show by example. I would say that's yeah. show by example. Show by example and make sure that in collaboration with other departments, um, we always tend to focus on that part mm -hmm. because when sitting together with different I, a project is never done alone, but. Mm -hmm. Um, when sitting together with, with different departments for projects, um, that's my main focus, let's say. Yeah. How will it be? I, what will the end result be for mm -hmm. the employee? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, how does technology influence your employee um, experience strategy? How does it improve engagement? And maybe um, what difficulties are you experiencing right now? Uh, that's a that's a difficult question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Does it make um, because you you are really ex um, the responsible for the technology part of employee experience? Correct. Um, how important is that component next to culture, next to um, the environment? How important is that, and how does that improve? the employee experience and engagement overall, the technology um, mm -hmm. part? Huh? <laughs> the question remains difficult. Yeah, I okay. Say. I but thought um, I would pose it in another way, so to make it, no. No, no, but no. I, I, I can try to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to answer that one. But uh, Increasing the engagement of the employee by merely implementing an IT tool, that's, that's not really what's going to happen, if mm -hmm. you ask me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it has to be the whole. It's it's one part of the story, but it's yeah. not the whole story. No, that's so, true. But it, it will influence. It will influence the way that uh, people look at you as a as departments. We're offering services towards our mm -hmm. employees. And it needs to be as nice as possible to them. Mm -hmm. uh, if it will increase engagement, I hope so. I do hope so. That's... Mm -hmm. um, by being satisfied with the services that we offer as an HR department, um, they will also be more engaged. Mm -hmm. But in engagement, you have a lot of other factors yeah. playing, uh, playing a role. Yeah, so that is actually what I'm trying to, to figure out by, by asking different companies mm -hmm. that question is uh, you have those three components uh, in order, you, you have more components if you want people to be engaged. But the technology aspect, as people are working more remotely um, and working more from home during this COVID period, but it will last. Eh? I would tend to think that technology is becoming more important than it was beforehand. Because if people are frustrated by having to use mm -hmm. the tools that are not convenient to them, they will kind of don't use it or, or, or maybe they yeah. they will find a workaround so that's actually what I'm trying to 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 obtain um, that's the information I'm trying to mm -hmm. gather is it has it become more important the technology part than it was before now people are working mm -hmm. from home I think that uh, the perceived perf I, the perceived importance has be has increased so people mm -hmm. are more and more aware that uh, the digital, the digital side of working has become, I, does add value mm -hmm, in the past. Mm -hmm. Mainly, I, they were looking at costs and look yeah. what, what does this cost us. And now, indeed, um, we're more and more seeing that this is an added value. Yeah, yeah. okay. But collaboration tools like, uh, like SharePoint, like mm -hmm. Teams, so we have the old MS Office suite. Yeah. Um, I, I was surprised to see within uh, within our company so um, how fast things could evolve yeah. when it when it had to and yeah. how smoothly all transitions yeah. went just because it had to. Yeah. All of a sudden, no more questions, no more yeah. no more difficulties, and I it went quite smoothly. Yeah, I think that was year. the ultimate 
Test. insight for everyone. Yeah. What? How come that everything that was so impossible mm -hmm. <laughs> to 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 do to go ahead that it it was actually yeah. almost overnight that we succeeded Correct. in getting people to work that way. So uh, maybe when there, we underestimated our workforce, or maybe there's a lesson here that you shouldn't always get an get offer them an alternative because as long mm -hmm. as there is an alternative that they were used to using they will kind of well yeah. we all are like that yeah, but we tried to, to previously we, we talked about mm -hmm. it before prior to this interview about yeah. home working yeah when when talking to uh two people uh home working but uh what will my employees do will they be productive yeah. and so on yeah. so there was a there were a lot of unknowns mm -hmm. and then the unknown was filled with yeah, but it's going to be bad. It's going yes. to I, you cannot trust, and maybe I do trust, but not totally. And mm -hmm. I, people had to let go, and and they see that it's working. Yeah. And so to they, be honest, in my case, I, I mostly work on projects and yeah. do follow up in I internationally. That is working very fine. I must yeah. Say. Yeah, but you are experienced indeed in working remotely together with a yeah, team correct. international. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Um, do you have um, a best or next very innovative practice that you want to share with us? A very innovative practice? Or something Not that you're very proud of that you say, this is something that we well, did really with, great. Within the digitization project, I must say that what I'm proud of is uh, is the level of um, of collaboration that we got with the, um, with the affiliates. So we always yeah. had very good contacts in the past, but um, that was one of the advantages of, of implementing a central software mm -hmm. like, like uh, SuccessFactors, that is that um, all of a sudden, everybody uses the same platform, mm -hmm. and we have now built a real community of mm. uh, of key users within uh, within the region. Um, so I'm very proud of what we achieved as a team, and the fact that we start learning from each other. So yeah. it's not only headquarter saying to the affiliates what you need to do, mm -hmm. uh, what they need to do, but it's really affiliates inspiring each other. Um, to do new practices, to okay. share what they are doing. Yeah. So it's it's really yeah, it's it's a very interesting platform. Yeah. And I, it expands. Eh? So it's so we have key users, mm -hmm. people really working in the system, working. Then you have the more the users, mm -hmm. let's say, also HR colleagues that um, have less experience. And in the past, we we never saw them, uh, but now we do. Yeah. Now we do have contacts with them. Okay. Um, we also work on the level of management. Management, usually they're consuming um, mm -hmm. data from the system, but they're not working in it. So I, we also have communication initiatives specifically to them mm -hmm. to also I onboard them yeah. to, uh, to the digital experience and their managers, so usually okay. the managing directors. So we have also communication platforms for that. So yeah. if you ask me, what are you proud of? I the collaboration mm -hmm. and the fact I we opened up a lot of communication channels I, to start really collaborating and working mm -hmm. together as a team. Okay, that's nice. Now, what is your um, major takeaway or um, biggest failure that you learned from or, or biggest lesson learned um, that other people can learn from? Biggest failure? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is this taped? Uh, <laughs> you can also say your biggest takeaway or your biggest learning ever. Yeah. Um, we like to learn no, from each other. No, no, but yeah. uh, biggest takeaway, and it's, it's also, um, is it a failure? I'm not sure. But we, we started out with uh, with our LMS uh, system, so mm -hmm. learning management system, uh, from the perspective of a headquarter, really mm -hmm. saying, okay, we know how, I, how to arrange, how to organize uh, training, because we do. Mm -hmm. We have more than four to five thousand uh, external people coming to us uh, in a year, and that we, we train them, so we know mm -hmm. how it's done. Yeah, and we and will offer it you then, or something. And you like can that. take yeah. a copy for <laughs> your country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. It doesn't work that no. way. So mm -hmm. I know it works, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then then the 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 implementation, let's say, so um, every every affiliate, so every daughter company also. Um, has a has other ways of, of dealing with things mm -hmm. um, 
sometimes it deviates a lot some usually not but every deviation is then a struggle because they yeah. feel like it's imposed yeah um so what we did in a second project is uh instead of going for the central approach also involving uh, especially yeah. the bigger countries to uh uh, to give also their inputs and mm -hmm. to change some of the processes that we had in place. Okay, so it's actually kind of getting out of your bubble from your expertise, thinking you have the solution for everyone, yeah. and instead of uh, yeah. staying in your bubble, you kind of reach out to them and correct get it's, information. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a mix. Eh? So you, I, of course, we want efficiencies. Yeah. So we don't want a scatter plot. So no. I, the situation where we started from was everybody had their own systems mm -hmm. and could do whatever they want. Now yeah. we have a central system um, and we cannot copy the old system and the new system for that specific country. So it's mm -hmm. it's massaging yeah, uh, yeah. and doing small changes and only doing it when it can also be used for another affiliate. So that's, yeah. what, that's where it's yeah. becoming important that it's not us headquarters saying to them you have to do this mm -hmm. but you work you come together as a group and then one affiliate has a good idea but the other affiliate thinks it's nothing and by talking yeah. you come up with a solution that's suitable for everybody for everybody okay i can imagine yeah. it's quite a balance if you go for efficiency but still you want to involve yeah. every country with their own yeah. specialities yeah, yeah. correct so yeah. the I, the digital side is the easy side yeah. let's say it's really about collaboration mm -hmm. setting expectations yeah um yeah and also in in most cases especially in the bigger countries it's not a greenfield implementation mm -hmm. it's really they already have systems in place yeah. so why would they adopt yeah something that comes from headquarters yeah so, true um yeah it needs it needs some massaging, it as, needs you, some uh, massaging. as you said okay. but also i as a headquarter you, mm -hmm. you learn from it huh? yeah so it's a really yeah. It's a nice experience, I would say. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think that's very, uh, very useful information for people mm -hmm. who are watching, who are uh, or who are listening. Um, unless there's some major takeaway that you want to share, I think this kind of wraps this podcast mm -hmm. up. So maybe final last words, if you want to share something. No, just go for it. Don't be I. Um, for digitization, mm -hmm. my advice would be go for it yeah there are always reasons not or i there are always risks yeah um but it's better to to start documenting what are the risks yeah. and what will i do in case something happens mm -hmm. uh, but don't let it prevent you from taking the step okay so, so go for it go for it final words thank you uh very much for uh letting me get inside uh your head oliver i hope mm -hmm. it didn't hurt too much ouch <laughs> thank you very much and um, thank you for uh, listening or watching this was yet another episode of our zigzag hr podcast in collaboration with sap if you're interested to learn more about human experience management or employee experience be sure to tune in again because i will have some other interesting conversations with proximus and tv hash and of course the most important thing that you will never ever ever forget after watching all these episodes of brain pickings it's a great time to be in hr See you next time.